All right, uh, I've had uh, a number of people over the last, I don't know, month or so contact me on uh, on YouTube and on elsewhere on different forums, ask me about what kind of stones I recommend and different strops. You know, they, they want to know what they should be using bar compounds or CBN or diamond. And the vast majority of people say that they're not getting real sharp edges with, you know, with their current setup and you know they want to go to a higher grit because they think that's going to give them a, a sharper edge or they want to use uh, you know a strop or something like that with different type of compound they think that's going to help them out and the fact of the matter is when you're sharpening even off of your first stone even if it's a really coarse stone like a 220 or a, this 320 shaft that I'm using you should be able to get a, a really sharp edge um, and you know, I, I challenge anybody out there to that's been sharpening for a while, or even if you're new or fairly new, try sharpening on your course of stone and see if you can get a really sharp edge. The vast majority of people, or a good majority, probably probably can't. And you know, that's not me saying that you're not a good sharpener, I'm better, or anything like that. It's the opposite of that. Um, you know, you should really try and get a you know the, the edge as sharp as you can off of your course of stone whether that's you know 220 320 or even something like a 500 you know shaftner or whatever and just to see how sharp you can get it um, if you can't get it sharp at all if it's not arm hair shaving sharp it's not cutting paper then I would really highly recommend that you kind of work on refining your skills until you can a little bit until you can get a nice sharp edge off of your your course of stones um, because I think in the long run that will that will help you as you progress up into the higher grits. Um, what I'm going to do is just do I'm going to sharpen on this one stone. This is a cheap Mercer kitchen knife, stamped steel X30. You know nothing special by any means. It's, like I said, it's a fairly soft, soft steel. It doesn't take any type of good edge, and if you can get a, a good edge on this, you can get a good edge on about anything. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on this 320 grit shaft, and this is the shaft and pro, just to you know give you an idea of how sharp you can get a a knife on a lower grit, and I can get this sharp enough to where I guarantee you 95 plus percent of the people out there for kitchen use would be more than happy. I mean it'll be very sharp. So. Grab a piece of paper here, give you an idea how sharp it is now. Well, it cuts, but it's pretty rough. And I'll even dole it out a little bit more. That's really dull now, so. First thing I'm going to do is to work a burr up. And I'm not using, you know, a lot of force. I mean, I'm, I'm probably putting 8, 10, 12 ounces, you know, just a little bit of force or a little bit of pressure down. All I'm going to do is work up the burr. Try to make it nice and fine. I don't want to work up some big old massive gnarly burr on there. It's going to make it more difficult, more time consuming to remove. going a little bit faster than I normally would. You know, if you're fairly new or brand new to sharpen, you know, take your time, go nice and slow, you know. 
no reason, no reason to go be in any big hurry. seen a lot of people, a lot of different videos, they say they recommend using pressure on the back stroke and none on the front stroke. I don't know where they get that from. I mean, if, if you do that and it works for you, then, you know, by all means do it. I've, I've never done that, you know, except for I've tried a few times in the past and it does nothing for me, so... Just another step you're adding complicate the sharpening process in my opinion but so got a burr worked up on the other side probably a little bit bigger than I need but now what I'm gonna do there's no burr on this side but on this side get a big burr so what I'm gonna do is and this is very important I'm gonna basically take scrubbing passes but I'm not gonna use any downward force just the weight of the my hand and the knife on the stone and that will just basically grind away that burr without flipping it without creating a burr on the opposite side now normally there's going to be a little bit of a burr that works up on the other side so what I like to do is take alternating passes using no pressure and that removes the vast majority of the burr 90 plus percent of it and then do some uh, either edge leading or stropping type strokes to remove the rest of it so. So again, very light pressure. Actually, you know, the, basically as light as the lightest amount of pressure you can use. Just your, like I said, hand, your fingers on the blade, and take some scrubbing passes. Feel it. It should be at least reducing. Which it feels like it is. So I'm going to flip it over. Again, no pressure. Very, very light scrubbing pass. You do one or two of those, flip it over, and I'll do this four or five times, and that's generally enough. And if you're using a higher higher quality steel than that, it normally takes a lot less. You know, normally you can just get away with doing it on one side, checking it, and the vast majority of it's gone. But these cheaper steels are a little bit trickier to, to work with, they're softer, so I mean, in reality, if you wanted, you could get away with using this to sharpen all your kitchen knives. And, you know, once you did a little, you know, practice with it a little bit, you'd be more than happy with the edge it would leave, especially if you use a strop. It'll leave a really, really good edge, even at 320, which most people would consider very coarse. I can feel just a tiny bit less. That feels pretty good right there. Just want to do now is clean the stone off real well. Put a nice heavy fresh coat of water on it. Now since this stone, you know, a lot of people are confused about taking, you know, like finishing strokes is whether they should take any of you know any kind of a finishing stroke whether that be edge leading or a stropping type stroke something to keep in mind is that the stone you're using you know, depending on what stone you're using some stones are softer than others some shed uh, you know a lot of abrasive some shed a little abrasive some stones shed really no abrasive this is a softer stone in my opinion it sheds a lot of abrasive um, you know, you use this for a minute or two and you rub your hand on there, it'll just be coated with the, the abrasive off of the stone. You generally don't want to use edge bleeding passes on that type of, of stone. Uh, it'd be much better to use uh, edge trailing or stropping, which I'm going to do here. And when you do this, you want to use very, very, very light pressure. You don't want to put any pressure on it at all. 
course you want to find the angle that you're, you've been sharpening at. That's what you want to take the strophing passes, that same angle. And literally the wider the passes you can go, the better in my opinion. So. Sharp. I can still feel a little bit of that burr, a little bit of grittiness. I'm not using any force, just the weight of my hand. Letting the, uh, the fibers, the leather fibers loaded with compound, just brush over that edge and clean it up. Again, if you can, you know, if you try this and you're not able to uh, to get a sharp edge at all on a coarse grit, and you, you practice a bit and you're able to after a while, I think you'll see that that really improves the edges that you're seeing on your your you know your higher grit polishing stones. So, you know, after say 2,000. Well, not quite, but very very close. As you can see, that's very, very clean. It's still it's catching just a little bit down here. Another minute or two stropping. It would clean that up, but that's that's a nice clean cut. If your kitchen knife will do that, it's more than sharp enough for basic kitchen use. And you can see that just glides through that like butter. Twenty. You can pick that up or not. It's three twenty. It's a Shafton Pro. All right. I uh, hope this uh, helps. And uh, I'm genuinely, genuinely interested. If you try this, you know, you try sharpening on your lower grits. You know, what kind of edges you're able to get. And uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, as always. Please feel free to, to leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.